To be lucky in line, the resurrection of a 1978 Mercury 115 Tower of Power by Mark, Peter, and the Merc Whisperer Merkson L6. Resurrection, the rising of the dead, the last judgment. Yeah, I'm old and I'm old school, but don't get me wrong. I love the idea of turning the key and going for a ride, but when things go south, I don't have a clue. When it comes down to old two-stroke outboards, for me it's compression, spark, and fuel. Some say they can turn the flywheel and tell if the cylinder's compression within 10%. I like using a gauge, but keep in mind that every gauge that you use can be different. Spark can be from the distributor or power pack. There are many simple tests for spark, or you can use the process of elimination. A simple process of elimination is to spray some carb cleaner while cranking the engine. If it shows signs of life with the spring, then it's likely fuel. But I'd like to confirm it with a spark tester and even hear the sound of the wire arcing. Keep in mind that many electrical parts needed for spark, like the switch box or trigger, can cost you hundreds of dollars, and the engine may not be worth it. Fuel, you need it, you can smell it, and you can see it. The fuel pump on these older Mercs, they're still available, they can be easily replaced, or they can easily be repaired. So when I picked up this inline 1978 or 79 115 tower of power as a backup and teaching tool, I had Merck's son L6 check it out when he delivered it. He delivered my 79 functioning 90, and he took a moment to appraise this for me. He hooked up the controls, we turned the key, and nothing but crickets. It turned out the internal harness was botched, and many of the wires weren't even connected. So with a set of jumper cables directly to the starter, we did our compression readings, and we obtained that all the cylinders were around 140 pounds. While it was cranking, we could also hear the plugs arcing, so we had spark. Do it again? Yeah, do it again. No, do it again. The internal harness was a mess. It had a distributor, and the ignition wires looked okay. As much fun as the Sidewinder is with the 90, we couldn't break the 50 mile an hour barrier. We joked about how nice it would be to bring back the life of the 115 that we had stored in the back of the garage. So about nine months later, we had a window of opportunity and we packed up the 115 with two of the project engines and headed down to West Virginia to watch the master at work. We arrived on Sunday night, we mounted the motor, and with an ambitious and near impossible goal, we wanted to make this thing talk in less than a day. All the cowling was removed, the carburetors carefully teased out, and then the butchered old internal harness removed and the CDI new harness placed in place. While the carbs were being ultrasonically cleaned, Peter and I removed decades of grime, bugs, and old pine needles that contaminated the entire engine. Merkshaw focused on the carbs, and then we were excited to make this thing talk and scream. We got lucky in line. Now back to the boat, and let's break the 50 mile an hour barrier. I would like to thank my lifelong friend Peter and Merkshaw for allowing me the opportunity to get this outboard back to life, and I'm looking forward to having this thing on the water and breaking that 50 mile an hour barrier. Thank you, and have a great day.